here's how you can upgrade your voice acting skills. Hello everyone, it's Miwagolo here, and I'm back for more Object Show tips, after like three years. Anyway, if you haven't seen the first two parts, check the description. And I'd like to quickly thank Apricot Stone for her help with this video, thank you! Now, let's get started! Before you start voice acting, you'll need a microphone that you can input to your computer or laptop. Depending on your budget, there's a lot of options you can choose from, but even on a budget of $0 and a pair of paper clips, you can have decent results. I would recommend spending at least $50. If you really have no other options, you can still record on your cell phone or tablet using voice memos on iPhone or voice recorder on Android. However, the location that you're recording matters much more for a built-in phone mic than a professional microphone. Going into a tight space like a closet with blankets to block echo is vital to record, but I'll talk more about this later. For $50, you can buy a blue snowball online or in certain stores. I personally used one of these for all of my videos between 2015 and 2022. By last year though, it got a bit beaten up and it doesn't work quite as well, so I bought a new microphone. This means it lasted almost 7 years, so it's a perfect option if you don't want to invest too much in the beginning. A link for this mic and all my other recommendations will be down in the description. My biggest recommendation, personally, is to go for the Samson microphone, which is only about $20 more. It's the CO1U Pro. Unlike the Blue Snowball, this mic has built-in noise suppression, which will help immensely for making your voice sound cleaner. And that's what I'm using in this very video! From there, it only goes up. If you're getting something more expensive than $100, you might want to look at XLR microphones. Many of these are condenser microphones, which as opposed to dynamic microphones, produce better sound quality and absorb less background noise. But XLR microphones both have a unique kind of cable and usually need an external power supply to be able to work. The microphone I use is the Rode M2, which I got for $150. With the previously recommended microphones, they are USB microphones, so you could just plug them into your computer and start recording. But XLR Microphones require some kind of audio interface, which is a device that converts audio to something your computer can work with. One of the best, cheapest audio interfaces is the Scarlett Focusrite, which can cost from $80 to $180, depending on the amount of inputs. But in the end, unless you are pursuing a career in voice acting professionally and will be submitting auditions to big companies, you will be more than fine with just a USB. In fact, I recommend not even buying that until you actually decide that you enjoy voice acting. <laughs> Pop filters are absolutely not required if you have a mic like the Samson or Rode M2, but what they do is block out the popping noises like for P sounds. It helps your audio sound cleaner. If you decide on getting the Blue Snowball or getting something cheaper than that, a pop filter would be a good purchase, and if you want to get into voice acting professionally, pop filters are a must. It is important to be at least a few inches away from your microphone even when you are using a pop filter, so keep that in mind. Once you have your mic and additional equipment, it's time to prepare for your recording session. Brush your teeth right before recording. It lowers clicks and unwanted mouth sounds, making your lines sound even better. After that, you'll want to enter your recording space. Not everyone has the ability to buy those foam pads that are seen in a lot of professional voice acting studios. However, you can create a perfect space with just supplies in your home. Here's an example of Apricot's recording setup, which is in her closet. Closets in general are a good option because they're small and the doors can be closed, which helps reduce echo. Hanging up a large blanket in front of you to block out background noise will really help out. Sometimes I record under a desk with the same blanket technique, and sometimes I just lay on my bed with pillows surrounding the mic. Honestly, these work too, but you'll want a really nice setup if you're working for a professional show or someone that really cares about the quality of your lines. Anything like this is a vast improvement over shouting into the mic in your room with no additional setup. Now it's time to finally start recording! You'll need to use a digital recording software to capture your audio, and for that purpose I recommend Audacity. It's a free application which is fairly simple to use for recording purposes. I have a link to Audacity in the description, literally like 95% of my OSC colleagues use this to record, so it's very common and very easy to use. Once you're in Audacity, you'll want to mess around with your input level settings to ensure that your recording is perfect. The mic input volume bar can be found right here, and you can adjust it to your liking. I suggest to try speaking a few times with different settings, and make sure to talk both in a shout and in a whisper, to make sure the shout isn't too loud and the whisper isn't too quiet. Make sure in your test that nothing in the audio clips, which is where the blue waveform hits the top and bottom of the window. You don't want that to happen because your audio will sound blown out and pretty bad. In Audacity, you can actually make clipping show up as red lines through your audio. Just go to the view settings, click show clipping, and then boom! That way, if you see that red line, you know to re-record the line right away. 
Now it's time to hit that record button and go. One useful tip is to leave about 10 seconds of background noise at the beginning without your voice at all, so that audio editors can more easily remove the unnecessary background noise from your lines later on. Once those 10 seconds are up, it's time to record. The vast majority of shows are made using a script on Google Docs, so read through the script and record audio for your specific character's lines. You should already know the voice that you want to act out for the character you're recording for, but if you don't, there's a lot of things you can do. You can use your normal voice, but I'd recommend trying different wackier voices depending on what your show's creator wants the character to sound like. Make sure to say each line at least five times in different inflections. For example, if you get a line that says, It's over here, Cactus, you can say it in multiple different ways. Some of these ways could be, It's over here, Cactus. It's over here, Cactus. It's over here, Cactus. It's over here, Cactus. Or even, it's over here, Cactus, come on! Like, there's a lot of different ways you can record a line in different kind of moods. Saying the line in all these different ways will help the creator pick out the option that fits their vision the best. And even if you're recording for your own show, having these different options will make it easier to combine your lines with other people's lines and making it sound natural. Additionally, the creator of the show could ask to direct your voice acting. Voice direction, at least from what I've seen, isn't too common, but if you are a creator of a show yourself, giving tips to your voice actors about how the line should be said or more context about the scene itself will help lessen the chances of having to ask for retakes. Make sure that when you're recording your lines, you keep an eye on the audacity window that you're recording in. To make the lines easier to edit by audio editors, you should try to make sure your volume stays consistent, not getting too loud later on for no reason. And as Apricot said before, monitor your clipping as well. And that's all for this video! I know there's a couple of aspects of voice acting that I glossed over, such as voice training to get a character to really sound like your own, but I think I need to do more research on that specific topic in order to teach about it. If there's something specific like that that you want to learn about, leave a comment and maybe I'll make it for the next Object Show Tips video. But until next time, thank you for watching and I hope this video helps you. That's what I'm making these for. I want to help the audience, I want to help you guys make your own shows and work for other people's shows. Yeah, so leave a like if you like the video, subscribe. This took a while to make, obviously. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.